Hello, welcome to the show. This is a Spiritual Money, and、uh, as you can see, to this time we're going to conduct our show in English. So in the near future, you will see Chinese translation here. Okay. <laughs> so today is my honor to have my teacher, one of my very respectable teachers, Danny Kersera. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for so, the invite. So, I I did a workshop. I think I did your workshop in July, right? That's right. It's the first workshop in Hong Kong. It's called Soul of Success. Yes. And then it's about finding your passion in life. Success. Yes. And、um, I did it in July, which is the first one. And I、oh. just and and then by August, I already like double my income in my company. So it really works. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to grab Danny to my show, and first of all, Danny is very to me is very successful, and he has a book called The Road to Success. Can can you talk about a little about yourself and then about your book? Sure. Maybe talk about yourself first. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me on the show, and I'm very happy to be speaking on this program.、Uh, I'm Danny Krusiger. I'm the founder of Freedom One International. It's an executive coaching and a life coaching company, and I also do business consulting. So the most of the people that I work with are,、um, you know, corporate executives in, in the corporate world. I also work with entrepreneurs and、uh, business owners who want to grow bigger businesses. But at the same time, I also started working with a few spiritual practitioners, metaphysical practitioners, and personal coaches because they want to become, you know, more successful and have a more Uh, balanced life in terms of business success and also personal fulfillment, because the kind of model I created for my work is that you know I don't look at corporate life and business life separately from personal life. So when you bring both these elements together, that's when you get fulfillment. Because one of my mentors, I remember Tony Robbins, used to say that success without fulfillment is the biggest failure. Can you say it again? Success, success. without fulfillment is the biggest failure. Totally agree. Yeah. So I said yes. That resonates, and that's something that I I I、uh, strive to provide during my workshops or during the seminars that I hold or during the private coaching、uh, that I do one on one. Yeah. So that's a little bit about me.、Uh, I was in the nine. I was for nineteen years in the banking industry. I was the chief operating officer for the Royal Bank of Scotland, and I worked in.、Uh, Japan, China, Pakistan, Philippines, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. So I've had a pretty, you know, a long, a long、uh, history of moving around Asia Pacific, and I've got three daughters. Yeah, they move with me. He's very merry, so <laughs> <laughs> with three beautiful daughters. <laughs> <laughs> so we move as a family, and it's the last fifteen years we've been moving. And now Hong Kong is my home, so I've、um, you know established my business in Hong Kong. I really enjoy helping people, and you know helping people succeed is just something that I do. And about this book, The Road to Success,、uh, this is with my mentor Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield is the man who wrote、uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. I think in Hong、Chitang. Kong, if anyone doesn't know who's Jack Canfield,、yeah. you can turn off the the, the computer <laughs> or your, your mobile phone now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jack is an amazing guy. I spent、uh, in 2015. I spent a lot of time with him. I trained with him because I wanted to do something bigger in life and not just a corporate job. I just wanted to, you know, impact people. And there's no one better in this industry than Jack Canfield. And I spent,、uh. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of time.、Uh, invested a lot of time with him. I trained with him, and,、uh, and, I'm, and he's, he's a friend and a、uh, personal mentor of mine. So. I had this opportunity to co-author the road to success with him. It's not just me and Jack, but it's、uh, other industry experts as well. And the reason behind this book is, yes,、yeah, to help people who want to become successful and they don't know how to do it. So instead of kind of you know reinventing the wheel and starting from scratch, they can read about people who've had real life challenges, real life problems, and real life solutions. And that's what we've got in the book. So there are people from, you know, the real estate industry, people from the coaching industry, people from medical practitioners,、uh, spiritual healers, you know, real estate agents,、uh, you know,、uh, lawyers. So it's it's a combination of people who have talked about the real life challenges and real life solutions. So instead of somebody trying to start from scratch, they can actually read the book and learn the principles how they became successful and just follow it. That's it's like a shortcut to success. It is interesting because 
when I did your workshop, I didn't buy the book actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a kind of like reading, especially yes. this thick. But then when you talk about it, I started to remember, even though I was once very successful in yeah. the investment world, yeah. <clears throat> I was a head of coach in the largest uh, Canadian land banking company, and then also in Hong Kong. Yeah. And, and then when I started a small business like this, I was totally lost. Mm. And it seems like the, the success formulas I used to have, which is team building yes, and then sales work. and marketing, totally didn't work. Yes. And it took me a long time yes. and then burned a lot of my money to learn the lessons. Yes. Maybe I should get a book. <laughs> because what happens in corporate life is that you're already inside a structure. So technically you're following uh, structures that somebody else has yeah. already formed and you're yeah. just following it but you're not actually uh, tuning into your own passion and purpose in terms of what you're really good at and and so when you start a business like yourself you are kind of you know uh, on your own and you have to figure things out and a lot of people who come to me are exactly in the same position they're a little bit yeah. on their own and I say no you look at somebody who's already achieved that you want to achieve and just see what principles they use to get there and that is kind of a shortcut to success and I think it's very powerful and then um, and then there was a time there was a time I really doubt, doubted myself like maybe my success in the business world was just pure luck you know what I mean yeah. because actually it's not because I was so successful for like six years it cannot be luck for six years absolutely and then there's a lot of winning uh, success formulas there and a lot of success experience there yes but only because the business has changed yeah from a, a corporate world like as you said all the structure and the platform is already formed by somebody else yes. right and I'm just doing my job it's like even the head of sales is like just a role in the company yeah. but here even though it's small, it's a, just a very small business, but I'm everything. Yes. I'm, I'm the janitor, I'm the gen general manager, <laughs> yes. I'm the accountant, I am the trainer, I am everything. So it's, it's really tough. That's, so that's a big mental shift actually. It's a huge mental shift for you, right? To go from doing that and now doing this. And also because I don't have a very successful relatives like it's a very successful uncle or auntie I can ask for I can ask like hey how what should I do now I'm, I'm stuck there yes they're, they're actually and my friends they cannot be my mentor mm. they cannot be my coach no matter how successful they are they won't have the time or the patience or the persistence to help me get through so when um, as actually Jessica <laughs> Jessica called me she said uh, well there's a workshop I really think you should be there and I was like, yeah, another workshop. I took tons of workshop. Why should I take another workshop? And then, and then, anyway, I was enrolled <laughs> by her. And then I just found that in your workshop, I really love about it because it's so, it's so, I wouldn't say basic, but it's like a combination of the spirituality and then the business world. Yes. And then, once again, I have to ask myself, like, who am I? Mm. And I would say, at a certain extent, in the past 12 years, which I left the investment world, I think sometimes I really forgot myself. Like, I forgot who I am. And then I was struggling all the time, struggling with a lot of works and roles and, and you know. So, so, but I see you, you left the banking industry not long ago like one or two years ago yes that's right and then immediately you wrote a book and then it, within two years you have a lot of setup and then you have your own workshops and how come you're so smooth <laughs> and then for the other people we just struggle like a lot of spiritual teachers or healers or whatever they just struggle and struggle well I think what is your strategy <laughs> what's your strategy really <laughs> <laughs> but I think the way I would look at it is that, you know, when you're, some, something we did in the workshop and you did it as well, when you created an empowering identity, if you remember, we created an identity and I we came that. and we, and we discovered our life purpose. Yes. And when you discover your life purpose and your passion, what you're really passionate about. I really love that part. I can share a little later. Yeah. So when your purpose, your passion and your vision and your goals are in alignment, that's when I believe that the universe conspires to provide opportunities, resources, and people in front of you that help you to get where you want to go. 
And it's not that I just started writing this book uh, after I finished my work, but basically I started writing this book even when I was in the corporate world. Oh, yeah. you started? Yes, I'd already started, oh, okay. started with this. It was a project that was ongoing for the last six months, but this is something I, I didn't see this as work. You know, the thing is, when you like what you're doing, you don't see it as work. And I remember Jack used to tell me that when your vocation becomes your vacation, vacation. that's when you've made it. Right? Oh. So I, I kind of find it, uh, you know, really inspiring that um, I'm able to provide some value to our readers, provide some value to some person. So when I wrote this book, and I'll tell you, when your purpose, passion, vision, and goals are aligned, you know, opportunities just start coming out for you. And this was an opportunity that just came out of the blue. Uh, we were asked to, you know, co-author a book with Jack Canfield. Uh, they said that, you know, there's a big chance it will become a bestseller, which it did become a bestseller on Amazon. Uh, uh, of course, we had to invest a little bit in order to, you know, make sure that, you know, the book gets written, gets published, and all of that. But the thing is that, you know, we were able to contribute uh, to a wide audience all over the world, which on my own I could never do at this point in time. And following this, I produced a movie which is called Soul, the Soul of Success, uh, and uh, that's why I kind of named my workshop Soul of Success. I co-produced the movie. Can we watch it? Sorry? Can we watch it? Yeah, it's an, it's an online movie now. Oh. It's already on online. Mm. Uh, it was, I was a co-producer for the movie. Uh, and that was something, again, a, a project that I, you know, producing and directing something I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Since I was a child, I wanted to do that always. Acting, producing, <laughs> and directing was something I really liked. And, uh, and you know, this is really strange. I'll just tell you the story of how this happened. Uh, I wanted to, you know, produce or direct a movie for quite some time. I haven't spoken to a few people that what the work we do, we should try and bring it out into the world and create a documentary film. But of course, I, I, I didn't, had no idea how that's going to happen. One, one night, I had, I, was, uh, I had a dream. You know, this is, I'm not making it up. It's a real thing. I had a dream that you know I should start and look at how we can make or produce a movie it was it was so vivid and so real so at 5 a.m. I woke up in the morning I sent an email to Jack Canfield and I said I'm having this dream do you think we can make a movie about what we're doing uh, I was I wasn't really expecting a reply to be honest oh, but he's, a, he's a dream maker like exactly. he always make dreams come true yeah and about 30 minutes he replied back he says he said I was in a I will, I'm in a, uh, he was in one of the university, I think, dinners or some prize distribution and he said, uh, I'll, I'll respond to you later, but keep having dreams like this with a smiley face. And I said, wow, that's cool. Uh, a few hours later, uh, his, uh, his CEO called me and she said that, you know, this is a very opportune time you've called because just one week earlier, you know, there's this five-time Emmy award-winning director, Nick Nanton. He called us and said he wants to make a movie or called Soul of Success, and he's looking for producers. Would you be interested? I said, hell yes. Oh, my God. So, and I, now the <gasps> thing is, you know, the thing I want to, the reason I'm saying this is because it's about inspired action. And that's really important because when you have an idea or an inspiration, you're supposed to act on it, even if, even if at that point in time you might feel it's impossible, who is going to ask me to become a producer or whatever? Yeah. But and you didn't even have any experience. No idea. Zero. Absolutely zero. zero. But there was an inspiration that, you know, let's find out what it is. And when you take action on an inspiration, that's when results happen. And that's what I believe is really, really powerful. And we talked about this in the workshop as well, that when you have an inspiration or an idea, uh, even though it might seem, you know, at a logical level, it's not possible. You should act on it. Yes. That that's a really important lesson I've yes. learned with the book. I've learned with the movie, and uh, even even when I did my TED talk, it was a similar thing. So you know, I've started to kind of understand the signals from the universe now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, it, um, before we started the interview, uh, Danny and I we talked, and then I just found that even for me. It's like the business world and the spiritual world is separated. And I try to merge them together. Okay. And then lately, I started to think about, I was very successful in the business world in the past. And that's definitely not pure luck. So there must be something I can use now. Mm -hmm. And then in your workshop, I just find that, first of all, I remember who I am. Yes. And then I just find that, um, one of the reasons why I was so confused and I wasn't doing very well is because I got confused with priorities. Right. 
like I have my talk show and then I have my pieces here and we run this center and then we run a lot of workshops and seminars and then I was confused with like which is my source of income and I was always trying to squeeze something out of nothing but anyway it's, it's a lot of confuse a lot of uh, uh, confusion mm. and then later I sorted out and I really find that first of all I was I was thinking about my own success before I came to your workshop and I was thinking about being a very famous talk show host like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> you are, in the world, yes. <laughs> and then I was thinking about I I, I would be a, a famous writer and then a famous this and famous that. And then later in your workshop, I just find that I'm actually a woman leader myself. Yes. I'm not a, a feminist. Is a feminist? Mm. I'm not that, but I'm a, I'm a I'm a woman leader and then I also help other women to become a woman leader and when I wrote wrote down that sentence I was so shocked literally like wow is that where I'm heading to to th th that I'm a woman woman leader and then I'm also going to help other women to be woman leaders that sounds like a lot to me but then I feel so grounded you feel inspired I feel inspired yeah. and I feel like I'm, I'm I'm a lot bigger mm. and because in the past I'm chasing after money yes. and now I'm chasing after fame and trying to get famous and somehow I wasn't happy in the past and I wasn't happy now yes and I mean in the field that case within the field that case I'll be gone why should I be rich or why should I be so famous for what there must be a reason I mean money and fame are good right but there must be something bigger than that. Correct. Or along the way, I'll, I'll get fed up and it's too hard and, and I will give up, mm. right? I think the biggest turning point is, and, and I've seen this in this workshop happening time and time again, is that people don't realize that they are here for a bigger purpose than they're just themselves. So people are chasing money, fame, the relationship, the woman, the man, the, you know, all of those things. But when we tap into the reality or we tap into the awareness that we are put here to do something that's just bigger than us that's when the shift actually happens and I think that's what happened for you and quite a few people in the workshop that they realize that wow I'm, I'm here to do something much bigger and something better yeah. uh, and, and I can actually achieve it so what what a lot of the work that we do during this workshop is to basically basically help people push the boundaries about what they think is possible and what's not possible and I, I could see that when you, when you came up with your you know purpose statement and you tapped into your passions, you know you 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 changed your your whole body language changed. You know, like you you looked energetic, you felt inspired. You said, "This is possible. I can do it." You had a plan in, in front of you, and that's what happens, right? So it's taking you from uh, anxiety into excitement, you know, from ignorance to awareness. That's basically what we do, and, and I'm very glad that you're actually getting there. And also, it's very important to understand what I can do and what I can't do at the moment. Correct. Because sometimes I, people told me like, oh, I, I'm going to be a billionaire or a multi-billionaire. And I was like, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? And what are you going to do with that much of money? Yes. If you could do it, you did it. Okay, there must be some reason why you can and then maybe the why is not strong enough. But I just find that um, many of us, like small business owners or from the business world to the spiritual world or whatever, we just sometimes we're not grounded. Mm. Yeah, I think the thing over here is that a lot of people ask me this question about you know, moving from a business or a corporate background into, into you know, spirituality or personal development. And for me, it's actually not two separate things because we are you know, spiritual beings in a human experience. So spirituality is always a part of us since the time we are born. So it's not a choice you make between you know business or spirituality. We are already there, yeah, and and most people think that we have to make that choice. And for me, I don't think we have to make that choice. We already made that choice when we came into this world. So the whole point here is to you know identify what you're passionate about to identify what is your purpose, to identify you know, what's going to make you happy, what's going to give you joy. And in the pursuit of that joy, you'll see a lot of the other things that you want, like money, the relationship, the, you know, the, the traveling, the free time, 
all of these things start coming to you more effortlessly. It's all more about you know, effortless success is what I would say. Because uh, when you're aligned, that's when success starts coming in from various directions. You know, you, you, you'll find, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you have an experience or not, but I found that a lot of people who I did not know previously, uh, and when I came up with this goal that I wanted to impact 5,000 people in five years, suddenly, you know, different people from out of the blue would show up and help me with that cause. Uh, and be careful, if it is in China, <laughs> you can achieve it next week. Yeah, I know. You know, China, they can be, oh, 5,000 is that enough? If it is not enough, I can have like 8,000. Yes, I, I know. So it's been so be one careful. year. It can be it's next been, week. It's been one year, and I've already, about 2,600 I've already covered, and, next, and I'm speaking at the Hong Kong Awakening next week, which is about 1,200 people. Yes. So, you know, the opportunities, it's not that I have to pick up the phone and call 10 people. It's just like, when you're aligned, you know, things start happening for you, but you've got to trust the trust the process. You have to trust the process, and that's really, really important. Okay, time's up, so we're going to have a break, and then we'll come back. See you again. Welcome to the second part. So, Danny, what? So, why do you think, in your experience, why do you think so many spiritual teachers or healers or people who change after they change the career, they're not making money at all, or they make very little money, like I did? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question I do get asked quite a few, t quite a few times, and quite frequently. And I, I, I believe that the main thing is that before you choose to do something different or you you know tap into your passion or you tap into your purpose the thing is why do you want to do it so if you are getting into spiritual work like you say the, the first question I would ask is why I heard that why many many friends of mine who are spiritual teachers or healers they would say I don't want a job anymore I don't want to work for somebody it's so blah 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 so is it a good reason well I think the way I would look at it is that discover what your purpose is, discover what your passion is. If spirituality or doing like healing work, Reiki, whatever that is, that's your passion, that's your purpose, do it, do it. The other thing is, I've, I've noticed that uh, people find it a little bit uncomfortable to charge money for spiritual work. And I've had this comment come to me many times, they say, I'm, do I'm doing spiritual work and how can I charge so much money? because there's, there's this uh, internal resistance in people, uh, which is a subconscious resistance, and they feel guilty when they charge money for spiritual work. And, and in my opinion, that's, that's not necessary because you're giving value. So you're going to a doctor, and you're going to get an operation done. He's not going to you know, give it to you for free. So it's, it's like a similar service you're giving. In fact, this is more powerful because you're transforming somebody else's life, right? So having, it's a, it's a limiting belief that people have that charging money for spiritual work is, uh, uh, you know, is, is shameful or creates a sense of guilt. And I say you, you, we need should to overcome that. We should be free. We need to overcome that. We need to overcome that. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's quite important. And I've, I have a lot of people are telling me exactly the same thing. I actually, from time to time, I, I got an uh, audience or from ask me, oh, can I talk to the, um, my guest, yeah. the guest in my show? And I, my, my relationship with my husband really, really bad, really screwed up. And so, can I talk to the guest? And I was like, yeah, you can talk to the guest. You just pay them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they expect like, can I chat with them? Yes. I said, no, you cannot chat with them. They're very busy professional people. You have to make an appointment and then you have to pay them. See, no. Basically, the one thing that I talk about in my workshop is like, what need you're trying to fulfill? You know, like people have various needs, uh, need for certainty, need for significance, need for growth or contribution. What need in your life you're trying to fulfill? Yeah? And, when you, and when we come, like people like us, what we do is we come from a need of you know, growth and contribution. We want to grow ourselves and we want to contribute to society. And when you're in that element, and when you're in that, in that frame of mind, uh, things start changing for you because you're not just doing it for the money, you're not just doing it for you know, fame or fortune, but you're doing it because you want to grow and you want to contribute to the world. So, so the money and the fame is, you know, is, is on the sidelines that comes to you 
when you do this work, right? How, how about you? About me? Yeah, you were so successful in the banking business, and then you got three daughters to 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 raise. So, what makes okay. you what make you change your field? Well, uh, I, I I I I can imagine like you must be like a. The, the paycheck must be good, right? Yes. Well, yes. Well, it was. I miss it. Was it. Nice. It was actually nice. I miss it. It was nice, <laughs> but it, I always wanted to have my own business. And that was something that I've been planning for the past about four to five years. But the thing is, I did not know what I wanted to do. Even you. Yeah. So at some point, of course, <laughs> we all we go through a stage of discovery, right? And I said, what do I really want to do? And uh, during the last four or five years, I kind of said, all right. This is something I really enjoy. Yeah, personal development work I enjoy. I was good at it even in my organization. And when we and when the time came when I wanted to you know leave the organization, I said this is the best time to start my own work. Right? It doesn't necessarily mean that you know you can do this work even when you're in a job. I was coaching when I was also in my banking in my banking job. So it's like I'm providing a service. So, but for me to start my own business on entrepreneurship and be able to you know you know do this work at a at a higher level at a more global level was something that I really aspired for that's what really changed for me and that's what that's what really moved for me because I was said now I'm in line with what I really want to do I'm in line with my purpose this is what I'm passionate about and this is what I'm good at and so you know you make the choice and at some point in time you in sometimes in life you have to take a risk Mm. You have to see what, what, what life is about. You know, uh, eighty percent of the people somebody somebody was mentioning this statistic that when people are, you know, closer to the end of their lives and they are asked what's your biggest regret, it's not about what they've done, it's more about what they didn't do. Yeah. So, you know, if you've got a dream, if you got something you really want to do, just go out there and do it. If it doesn't work, do something else. So what kind of people or what kind of clients they will come to you? Like what kind of problems or what kind of challenges they will have? Then well, you will help them sure. So that. basically, I work a lot with uh, corporate executives, uh, senior level corporate executives who come to me either for business things, business business problems, for leadership, uh, or they're just having a challenging time in, in you know in, in doing getting their jobs done. So I work with them. I work for women emp empowerment a lot. A lot of my a lot of my uh, clients are women because I believe this is the decade of the woman, and women are really rising up in the corporate ladder and even entrepreneurship. Uh, I work with young entrepreneurs who are just starting their businesses uh, and personal coaches. So I'm going I'm to be floating out a, a uh, personal coaching program where I'm training people to become coaches because a lot of people come to me and say they want to do what I'm doing. So right now I'm you know, launching a program where I'm going to help people become coaches as well. But they must be, how should I say, like they must be professional in a certain way, right? Because I, I heard a lot of people say, I want to be a coach. I want to be a business coach. I want to be a personal coach or a style coach, yes. which I have no idea what it is. <laughs> and then the most important thing is they must be good at something, right? Yeah, so the, the, the most important <laughs> thing is why do you want to do it? Yeah, why do you want to do so it? You must be very good at that because yeah. the competition in anywhere is vigorous. Sure. You have to be good, not just, we're not selling dreams like, oh, do whatever you want and then you can achieve it. No, because there are reality sure. too. Absolutely. Like the accounting and then you have to pay your rent and then a lot of expenses. Yes, that's absolutely true. So I think the most, the first fundamental thing is why you want to do it. Yes. What's the reason? What's the purpose? Why do you want to do it? Is there any one that come to you, that came to you, like after you ask them the why, 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 and then they couldn't answer and then they just give up? <laughs> Well, <laughs> and is it possible, or you just you don't you don't do that? You just encourage them to make a move. No, I think the most important thing is I, I do try to understand where they're coming from and what's the reason they want to do the work, because that's really important. Because that tells me whether they are interested or they are committed. There's a difference oh, between being interested yes. and being committed, right? Mm. So I like to work with people who are committed. I like that interested or committed. Yeah. So there are a lot of people who come to me for because they're interested in knowing the stuff or how do I do this, how do I do that. But you know what's important is to see how committed you are to make that shift. I mean, but sometimes it's, it could be a little bit difficult. It could be challenging. You know, it's like going from a corporate world into entrepreneurship requires a different set of skills, a different mindset, and a different way of thinking. And I had that same challenge myself because you know coming from a corporate world, you have 300 people at your back and call. Suddenly, when you're an entrepreneur, you have no one at your back and back and call. So those are skills you need to learn.
but I think it's having the belief in the fact that what you're doing is of value uh, and, and that's you enjoy doing it that's what basically makes you go forward yeah so I think that's that's the, that's the key thing and and, and, and and when I work with people and they ask me this question about you know I want to become you know I want to do what you're doing or become an entrepreneur our first thing is why do you want to do it yeah and and we go through similar things that we did in the workshop yes uh, and then they get very clear now they're really focused that this is exactly what's going to work for me so there's one exercise I really 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 love I'm going to share a little bit with you which is I guess it's the seven priorities like you ask us what we really want like goal we, setting yeah it's a goal setting like we have to close our eyes and then we think about if I if I have no career and then I can spend the rest of my life with my boyfriend in a bitch how does it feel you know that kind of question yeah, so because sometimes we we have priorities yeah. but it's, it comes passion from our test. mental passion test yeah that's, is it? that's when we did the passions and we, we were trying to identify our passions and sometimes you had you know you were not sure whether when we were ranking the passions as to one two three or five which is my main passion yeah and there was a confusion between say you had two passions but you didn't know which one was more important to you yeah and which one is real yeah which one is more or which one speaks to you more yeah and that's when we kind I of think that one is really powerful yeah can we share about that sure so this is basically this is for free so <laughs> State. So this is basically called the passion test that was uh, produced by uh, 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 Janet Atwood, Chris and Janet Atwood, and it's a book. You can actually, you know, you can actually get a book for that. And I did this training when I was working with Jack Canfield, and it was very powerful because you are able to yes, right. ident number one identify your passions as is what you're passionate about, but at the same time be able to, you know, get clear on exactly what it is it that you want to do by 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 identifying your your passions really clearly so you might be in a you might be in a corporate job that might be paying your rent that might be you know giving you a decent salary but it's not really giving you the happiness and the fulfillment that you need so you might have a talent in in in, in being a musician you might have a talent in uh, uh, in being a speaker or a coach or whatever and when you do the passion test those those talents, those potent that potential actually starts coming out of you, and you say, "Wow, this is what I'm really. This is what I really enjoy. This is what I really like. This is what I'm good at doing." And you start tapping into that, and that's what happened with you, where you kind of had a shift when you said, "Wow, this is what I'm really, really passionate about." And how do I grow this further? Yeah. So you know, passions you could always balance with your with your you know your corporate job as well if that's what you like. It, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you leave everything and go into that, but it's a choice you make. So, um, this is very interesting. So, if for for me, I wrote down five things. Okay. I remember the first thing is public speaking on stage. <laughs> right. I thought it's my talk show, but it's not actually. <laughs> I actually because in my talk show we don't have people here, especially today. Sometimes we have audience, but today we don't have any audience. But on the stage. When it comes to like a hundred people yeah. and hundreds of people, yeah. I feel so high. So my first priority is writing on stage. And then the second one is spiritual money, which is exactly what we're doing now. Because I'm so interested in spirituality and I'm so interested in money ever since I was a kid. <laughs> and I, but I wasn't a greedy kid. I just, I'm j now I know I'm actually so interested in money as an energy. Mm. Because money is a creative flow of energy. Money is energy. It is energy. It's not just a piece of paper right. or your plastic card. But it's a lot more behind that. And also, I just find that in my uh, younger life, that money really controls our family. Like the whole family working for money and then struggling about money. And then we, we my father was a businessman. Like I was so interested. Like why a piece of paper or a coin or a number? can control the whole family happiness. So that's why I'm so into it. And then I just find that I'm I'm giving it I'm giving it too much power. I'm feeding it like money. I'm feeding money too much power. That I that takes away my own power. Anyway. So it's very so, interesting. So, so the question you ask is that okay we've all got all this money but am I really happy? Yeah. You know that's the question people don't ask themselves. And then it applies to any anything. Yeah. Like the fourth one is being with my lover. So relationship and family really not my first priority. Mm. And I have to deal with that because sometimes as a Chinese woman, I feel guilty. 
I feel guilty like I'm not having a family on my own. I'm not having children on my own, and I should be, and I should have. And then, so, and then I remember, I uh, came out as um, uh, and and to do a demo for the other students, and I, I really like it when you ask me to don't trust this, but just close your eyes and then feel your heart, like then set the priorities. Yes, because you know. The feelings never lie. You know, the mind can play tricks on you, but your feelings never lie. So, you know, that's why when we do this training, it's called experiential training because you might, you know, you might forget what you see, you might forget what you hear, but you never forget how you make somebody feel. So that's why we go through an experience, and the feeling that comes up when you actually do this exercise, you know whether this really resonates with me or it doesn't resonate with me. And I think you did a pretty good job because I can see from all the work you've done is that now you are having quite a balanced or passionate life because you've looked at all your passions and you're starting to take action on that, which is which is exactly what we want people to do, to act on their passions because that's going to give you more fulfillment, more happiness, more abundance, more opportunities and more prosperity. And also after a few months, after a few months I graduated from the workshop, I finished the workshop and it is from July, right? Yes. And then this is now October, so three months right. from, <laughs> from our, you know, graduation. And the goals change a little. This, this priority is the top five, change a little. That's okay. And I just find that in my whole life, I never really pay attention to my happiness. Mm. I only know that, oh, I got to be good, I got to be great, I got to be uh, successful so as to make my mom happy and so as to make some, uh, my family, you know, proud of me. Yeah. You know, every, every family got a, is it black horse in English? Black sheep. A oh, black sheep. Black horse is the bad one. The black sheep is the bad one. Oh, the black horse I'm, okay, I'm talking yeah. about. All so right. I got to be the black horse in the family. <laughs> okay. okay. And then I just find that I forgot how to be happy. Mm. And now I'm actually... The fifth one is spending time in the ocean the whole afternoon. I remember you said you, you were a what? Uh, a beach bomb? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, wanna, you don't want to say that on, on television, but yes. I enjoy <laughs> beaches a lot, yeah. Okay, okay. And then <laughs> I just find that, hey, I, I like it too. And I like traveling. That I, I, didn't, I didn't travel for like 18 years. Yeah. Years. Yeah. When I was so successful and rich, I mean, when I got money, I have no time. Mm -hmm. And then after I left the business world, I dare not spend the money to play. And then playing is never on my any of my priority. Right. And then now, I, my mom's gone. And then I'm so, my talk show is so mature now and on the right path. And I started to think, why don't I play? Mm -hmm. I never travel for fun, I never travel to, to see the snow or to see you know, what's, what's happening in Japan or, or what to eat. Yeah. And I started to add it back like, hey, I really like to travel a bit yeah. and have fun. Yeah, so that's why when we do goal setting, one, I dedicate a part to free time. Right? We, we have goals that we uh, create on free time, uh, you know, fun time, recreation. And that's basically to encourage people to uh, celebrate success. It wasn't here. It wasn't yeah. here. <laughs> what a celebrate success. Uh, we have it in the goal setting part. So how do you celebrate success? And that's really, really important. The, the, the biggest benefit is that you're actually, you know, you're appreciating yourself. You're appreciating other people for your success. But at the same time, when you're, you know, when you're just having fun, when you're just enjoying, you know, there is a, there's a sense of freedom, there's a sense of happiness, and there's a sense of inspiration that for me, usually when I'm, when I'm say, traveling for fun, I get the best ideas when I'm doing that. Yeah. I actually started to believe, like, I was involved in the so-called spiritual spirituality since, like, 92, when yes. I did the life dynamics. And then I remember somebody said, some, some of the guru, he says, the universe would do anything to make us happy. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. And the universe does <laughs> make Madonna happy and then makes uh, not even Michael Jackson. I, I, I don't think I don't think he was happy. And the universe would do anything to make me happy. But only lately I started to see that could be true to me. Like if I'm not happy, if I'm not having a good time here, if I'm not taking good care of myself. Uh, uh, in terms of having fun, 
in terms of like really making good money for myself? How can I make other ha people happy, or how can I offer anything? Correct. I have to. I have to be the one in my own world, in my universe, to be happy. I am my responsibility. Yes. If I'm not happy, there is nothing I can offer. Yeah. So you know, the first principle we talked about was taking 100% responsibility for the quality of our life. And I think if you remember, we talked about you know three things we have control over: the thoughts we think, yeah, the behaviors and images we hold in our minds, and the actions we take. So have, that's the only three things we have control over. So what? I'm going to watch this show again and again and again. So what? 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 What <laughs> thoughts? What thoughts we are thinking? What behaviors do we demonstrate, and what actions are we taking? Is going to determine our experience in life. Because all I'm thinking about most of the time is work, work, and work. And after the workshop I did with you, I have this admin table. I never pay attention to admin, and now I'm paying. The, the attention to that mean and and money started to flow in and things started to really work out good and then it's just <laughs> anyway I have to balance myself and I, and I started to see hey I gotta have some I gotta have a break and I gotta have some fun so I decided for the first time in my life I'm going to take a one month off in this month and then I'm, I'll, I'll be going away to somewhere else which to me is totally outrageous. One month, as to me. One week is already too much. Three days, uh, you know, reasonable, but one month. But I really feel like I should go away and not to think about work and not to check my WhatsApp, not to check my whatever, and then just spend time with myself, read some books, have some good food, and then, and then in, uh, spend some time in the beach and then think. Yeah, because, you know, I totally agree with you on that because it gives you time for reflection. Reflection. It gives you time for reflection. You reflect on in these moments of when you're, you're you know when you're on holidays or on your retreats or whatever you do, it's a time for reflection, and you reflect on your past and at that. When you do, you know, introspection and reflection, you will come up with ideas and inspirations that are going to really take you forward. I heard that from my friends. They said. You have to travel, Esteli, because when you travel, yeah. you have the fresh idea. Yeah. yeah, the world changes. You meet different kinds of people. You have. For me, the most important thing about traveling is, uh, and not just traveling, it's just like doing nothing actually. Is it's just not one on one. Yeah, kind of. You know, ideas basically percolate, and then you come up with an idea and say, "Wow, this is something that really makes sense." You also reflect on what didn't work so well last year, or you know what what worked well, what didn't go so well. Maybe you could do something differently. If you're overwhelmed with work, maybe you should hire somebody to you know help you out with work. So there's a lot of things you could you could come up with, strategize, and you know you create you can create new goals during that period as well. But but having that time off is basically you're 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 honoring yourself. You're honoring oh. your body, you're honoring your spirit, you're honoring your soul that, you know, you're celebrating the success of what you've done. Because, you know, you, know, you, know, you live only once, why not enjoy it? Okay, we're going to have uh, another break. The 20 minutes is gone. So, I'll see you later. Okay, so welcome to the third part. So now we're going to talk about Danny's new book, The Inside Out. So eight success keys to help millennials thrive. Millennials thrive. Okay, so what is it about? Well, so I was inspired to write this book because I've been noticing for quite some time, especially in the Asian culture, uh, our educational system does not allow us or allow the you know millennials to to think outside the box or to become more creative and to follow their passion so by introducing more life skill training into educational institutions and helping uh, the younger generation make better career choices or better life choices I think it can help them get successful at a very young age so this book basically is, is, is targeted towards millennials, but at the same time, education institutions, uh, you know, the, the, the teachers, parents, etc., can also get a lot of value of it because it, 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 it will enable them to you know, explore and tap into the passions of people and become more creative. So at a younger age, they can make better career choices, better life choices when they you know, 
uh, start with their careers. That's basically the focus of it. Because what happens in, 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 you know, I've lived in Japan, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, all these places I've lived in, I've noticed that, you know, we, people have to conform to certain society standards. Now you yes, have to true. become, this profession is good, that is bad. You have to do this and you don't have to do that. So there's a lot of right and wrong and black and white. And which basically what happens is that your creativity does not come out. So what, what I want to do with this book is and to be able to influence largely Asian cultures where they allow people to be who they are and allow their creativity and passion to come through. So at a younger age they make better choices. So when you talk about younger age, what kind of age you're talking about? Well, I'm looking more, you know, at the millennials' age or yeah. people who are just uh, maybe probably in the universities or you know started their new jobs, uh, because at that point in time when you when you're at a stage where you can you know full of adrenaline, you're full of creativity, <laughs> you're fully motivated, and at that point in time when you make the right choices, it's just fantastic. Uh, because when I coach people uh, and they come to me and say, you know, I, I've been doing doing this job for the past 20 years, but now I realize this is not this is something I really didn't want to do. So I said, why are you doing it? <laughs> so you know, so, so basically it's because of society pressures, cultural norms, uh, you know, and, and 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 our limiting belief system, our fear that if I if I do something different from what everybody else is doing, people are going to look down on me. The fear of failure, fear of rejection, a lot of these uh, limiting beliefs they play a part. Uh, on people making certain choices. So through this book, I want you know to encourage people and even educate, find out in, I mean, education institutions to allow people to you know uh, become more creative, follow their purpose, follow their passion uh, into the world. So in your book, can you give us some tips now? <laughs> because not I even a lot of adults, adults friend of mine, they don't know what they want. They maybe they get graduated from from high school or they graduated from universities and then they got a job and then all of a sudden the, the, the kids are grown ups and then they left school and then all of a sudden a lot of friends of mine they find that they're so unhappy and then they stuck with the job stuck with the marriage that part we're not going to talk about <laughs> and, <laughs> and so many people are asking what is my purpose what is my passion why do I come here so how do you start I'm, I guess you must have, there must be a lot of people come to you with this kind of question, so yeah. how do you start with them? Well, basically it's fine, to, you know, well, initially if you're, if you're talking about like a how do I coach or, or process people, that's mainly trying to understand what they really want out of life. You know, what are, what are the goals and what, what's the outcome they want to achieve? And most people come, most people sometimes don't even know, they just don't feel happy and they want to experience happiness, right? So it's, it's a process we go through in terms of exactly sim similar to what we did, like you know, you're identifying your purpose. Why do you think you're in this? What are you here to do? What are your passions? What gives you the most joy? What what is it that you're doing is making you really happy? And that could be sometimes, you know, you know, the most simplest of things. Like I had a I had a client, uh, a very senior executive who was coaching with me, and. Uh, uh, her passion was basically the property, and she'd never been in real oh, estate. Oh yes, yes, life. I love that example. Yeah. Can you and talk she, about that? And she and she had never really explored that. And her yes. number one passion was nothing yeah. about the job. It yes. was always about like property, and and she said, "Wow, this is so cool!" And and she knows so much about the subject. And I said, "Look, you continue with what you're doing as a job because she was in a very very senior position. But why don't you grow this passion and becoming you know you know having a more balanced life so you can have more fun." In the last one and a half year, she's bought property in eight different countries and she's probably making more passive income than she's making active income. And, but she doesn't see it as work. She just sees it as a fun, as fun a passion. Thing to do. And, 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 and so that's, that, that's, that's really important. So the first important thing is what gives you joy? You know, what makes you really, really happy? Now if you didn't have all these, uh, these society pressures, cultural, you know, uh, pressures or education institutions showing you a structured way if you had you know a blank piece of paper how would you draw what would you draw on it so people get you know tap into their joy they tap into their passion they tap into their happiness and then they say all right this is what really makes me happy and they start including that part into their life and when they do that you know there, there's something called work-life integration that starts to happen and, and in this case you doesn't even have to quit the job no not at all 
Yeah, because many people is like, oh, I hate my job, and then I I, I want to be a, a Reiki master, and then. <laughs> But well, you can be a Reiki master whilst you do your job as well. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say, don't put your job right away. Have a plan, have a strategy. You need right. to, you need to pay the rent. You need to feed your kids. Yes, uh, no. It, again, it's a personal choice, right? Uh, what it is that you really, really want. I, I, I did a pers- I did my corporate job while I was, you know, doing this work as well, and I, I kind of enjoyed it. In fact, I was more effective in my job when I started doing this. Yeah. Because you're happy. Yeah, because you're happy, but at the same time, you could bring that skill into your organization as well. So, like for example, if I'm doing a life purpose exercise, I would do a purpose for my organization. Yeah. So when you create a purpose and a vision for your organization, it just inspires people to be the best selves. You know. So your so your uh, productivity and efficiency in your organization also skyrockets and really goes up. No. Oh. So when I'm coaching with the senior executives at companies, I always ask them the same thing, you know, create a purpose and a vision for your own company. Where do you see your company, where do you see your company going the next two or three years or mm-hmm. five years? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know, and a lot of people don't really know that, don't really think about it because they are so involved in the day-to-day business of things, right? So whatever work we do on personal development can actually work perfectly in your company as well. So it's not about making a decision about, you know, doing a business or a job. The decision is about doing what you enjoy and how can you integrate, you know, in your corporate life or in your business life. Well, you suggest that we all learn some business skills. What do you mean business skills? Like, like if I'm a, a Reiki master and I want to be the <laughs> number one Reiki master in, in Hong Kong. I, I, I'm not talking about Hong Kong. In Kowloon, let's say, then you need a strategy, or you would say, because I think you you really, you really makes the spirituality and the uh, commercial work quite well. So how do you do it? Or well, you do a lot of visualization, a lot of meditation. Yeah, so affirmation. It's, it's about it's about having success happens. That's really really important, right? You, you know, you look, you can you can meditate, you can visualize, you can do goal setting. You can do a lot of these things that we talked in our workshop, but at the end of the day, you need to do things. Believe it's possible. You know, a lot of people have a lot of big goals, but they don't believe it's possible. You got to believe it's possible. Oh, they do it, but they don't believe it. Yeah, you got to <laughs> believe it's possible. And secondly, you got to take action. You got to execute. Yes, that's true. Take and and, and I've seen a lot of people who've got very good plans, very good strategies, but they don't take inspired action. Because what happens is sometimes the opportunity that shows up is is different from what you envisage it was going to be. You know, it's somebody you might have a conversation with somebody at a bar or some at, at, at a restaurant, and the information they give you, if you just follow up on that, it might lead you to your yeah. goal. But a lot of people don't see that because they are focused on something else. I was some in I was once in a, a writing class, and everybody's talking about, talking about big ideas and only two people in that class actually wrote a book one is me yeah. one was me another one was a very famous Hong Kong politician and then <laughs> for the rest of them there are like 20 30 people they all talk about the great idea and blah 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 and then when, it, when we talk about so have you written it down mm. and they would say no but it's in my head no, everything is there and then I would say if how about some Tomorrow, you you were knocked down by a car. You, you have a car accident, and you got killed. Then, what about your book? Mm. What what happened to your books? They will be gone with your brain, with all your brain cells, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So taking massive actions are quite Action. important. And I think the most other thing important is, is to write down your goals. Yes. It's yes. really important. They say that's so scientifically proven that when you write down your goals and you see them on a regular basis, it increases the probability of achievement by one thousand one hundred percent. Say it again, 1,000? 100%. The probability Why 1,100%? Well, because... Why, because how come it's not 500%, but 1,100%? <laughs> that's what we It's just says. a saying. No, so basically <laughs> what happens is that when you write down something, yeah, and you keep looking at it on a, on a regular basis, you know, we all have a RAS, a reticular activating system, uh, that helps us you know, uh, look for opportunities and resources that is going to help us move closer to our yes, goals, yes. right? And when you look at your goals and read them on a regular basis, the thing is that it, it activates a law of attraction. Yes. Yeah, because you feel good about it, you feel inspired, you feel motivated. Yeah. 
And so your subconscious mind, what, what, what it basically does is it finds opportunities and avenues to get you closer to your goal. It's really simple. It's just that's, that's how it works. So a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, they have their ideas in their mind, but as soon as you ask them to put them on paper, then they realize, oh my God, this is too big. Oh, this is too small. You know, you've seen that when people do a goal setting exercise. So, so yeah, writing your goals so. down and reviewing them on a regular basis, you know, moves, creates momentum. And that's, that's really powerful. Very, very powerful. Mm. Okay, cool. So, very good. Another thing you can do is like people do create vision boards. Yeah. You know, they, they put pictures on a board about, you know, uh, what they want to do, where they want to. <laughs> a few years ago, uh, I got my picture and put it on the Time magazine and put it on my vision board just just for the heck of it. Uh, and uh, just a year and a half later, I got this book out and uh, Influence Magazine put me as 100 Top Authority for 2017. Wow! It was not Time Magazine, but at least... So see, these things are powerful. Yes. You know, these things are powerful. Uh, but it's, you got to play with it. You don't take it too seriously. you just got to play with it. You just have fun with it. Because the more fun you have with it, it you know, it, it just has that energy about it, which is, which is very useful. I actually did uh, Anthony Robbins' workshop that's called Life Mastery. Yeah, okay. In uh, Fiji Island. Oh yeah. In yeah. 2004. Yes. And then I was a very successful. I was very successful at that time working in the land banking field. Okay. Land investment field, and then they asked me what I really want. And at that time, I was really crazy about yeah. Oprah. Okay. <laughs> I watch her show every day, even <laughs> though I was so busy. And then I watch her show sometimes at like two or three times a day. At definitely one once a day, okay. And then at that time, I wrote a big picture that is um, uh, like a mind map. Yes. Then I said, I want to be Asian Oprah Winfrey. Mm. And then now I just want to be Esther Lee because I cannot be Oprah, okay? I just want to be me. I'm not her. I'm not black. I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not American. I'm, I'm just not her. Yeah. And then in, uh, in 2012, I started to work as a, a talk show host. And I totally forgot what I said in Fiji like eight years ago. And very soon people ask me, and very often people ask me, they said, so, so how do you become a, a talk show host? And I was like, all of a sudden I remember in 2004, I literally write down the mind map. Mm. Like in the center, there's a big cloud and I said, I am Asian over Winfrey. And then there's like airplane, there are people, a lot right. of things in the, in, the, in the map. And then I just remember, yes, I did it eight years ago. So you manifested it. Yeah. So it, it does work, the, the vision board. I, I have a vision board myself. Yes. <laughs> Very so good. can you talk, can, can you give us more tips on your books? Because you said there are eight success keys. Yeah. So give us more. Yes. <laughs> Please. Well, basically some of the things, I, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of summary about it. Uh, for this book particularly, I've interviewed different people from different walks of life as well. And one of them is going to be uh, Sarah Landon. Sarah Landon is a is she? she's a global transformation leader, and she and what she does is uh, she channels a group of people called the Council. Oh, you know, wow. like Esther Hicks. Yes, yes. So oh, I love her. So she is uh, so what, love her. You're you, you Sarah Landon. She's amazing. So she channels a group of people called the Council, called the, cha uh, the, the Council, and uh, they speak through her. And she was in a corporate corporate life. She had a corporate life. For a very very long time, many years she was in the corporate world, and then she, you know, you know, started her own work as a as as a as a channel, and you know, she's a spiritual leader now. Mm. So I've interviewed her for the book as well because I wanted to have, you know, wanted to interview people, real life people who could, you know, share their experiences, uh, and show the readers, you know, give them tips, success tips, or or you know, words of wisdom, and you know, how to how to you know. Uh, the, the shorter route to success, how to get to the shorter that's route. That's very success. precious. So, so that's I chose her from the spiritual side. Then I've got the uh, the owner of Fossil, the luxury brand Fossil. Okay. Uh, so, the founder of Fossil, Jal Shroff, he's also in the book. I've interviewed him for it. Uh, he's got a lovely story as well. He's a, he's a big philanthropist, um, you know, a, a mighty human being, and you really like his interview. Uh, and, and what they do is they basically share their share their stories and also give you 
their recipe for success. Wow. And that's really important. Then I've got uh, Nick Nanton, who's a five-time Emmy Award winner. So he talks about his story, how he got into, he was a lawyer, and how he got into movie making, and now he's a great director and producer. So, you know. How it, do you have this kind of connections? It just, you know, like, you know law attraction. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and some of the people I know personally as well. So it comes to that. Uh, then I've got this gentleman called Thibault Villay. Thibault Villay is basically, uh, he was the ex-president of L'Oreal and the coach in, in, uh, in Asia Pacific. And now he runs a company called May.com uh, in China. Basically, it's a very far, far, uh, fast-paced, glamour sales company, and he's doing really, really well. So he's in the book as well, and he shares a lot of the tips that are living in China, how he merges the European culture with the Chinese culture, and how he becomes successful. And I think it's a great success story because people yeah. who are in that position can actually learn from what he's saying. Yeah. The other one is uh, uh, Lo Ting Fai. He's the GM for View TV in Hong Kong. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. He's a very young entrepreneur. Not not an entrepreneur, but he's a uh, I do watch his. his uh, he's very good. TV, yeah. I interviewed him. I really enjoyed his interview, and he's got really. He's a funny. He's got a funny side to him, but he's very driven. And some of the lessons that he's and the success tips that he's given uh, in the interview, I think it would be very useful for people in Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, because he's, he's from local. He's yeah, local he, Hong Kong. He's local Hong Kong, <coughs> and uh, he's got a lovely story to tell, and he's doing fantastically. In view. he's really changing view TV right now. Uh, and he's like in his he's, 30s. He's actually founded it? No, oh, he's I the mean, GM. He he's, he's running oh, it. Okay. He runs it. Uh, and he's got some fantastic ideas. And I think people will really relate to what he's saying. Oh, I love his TV. So, I yes, so he's going to be in the book as well. Uh, so, I've got a, the, the way I wanted to have it is not just talk about you know, what you should do, but have real life stories and real life people, you know. You know, showcasing their successes and their challenges because they've all had challenges. You know? Nobody's successful in the first day. Yes, so yes. That's about it. I remember you talked about uh, a story, another story, that uh, there is a woman and she's so good at making cakes or dessert. And then later he tur she turned her love for uh, dessert into a business. You remember that one? You talk about it in your class. Mm. No, okay. no. That was I think the one. I think the that was the one who was uh, uh, who was who wanted to travel a lot. She was more into traveling, and she left her job and joined a traveling agency. Uh, and as somebody who used to take uh, people on exotic tours, yeah. And when she took people on exotic tours, she enjoyed that so much that yeah. in a few years she started her own company. Oh. And now she's got her own tour agency, a travel agency, and she's taking tours all around, all around the world because she's now, you know, she felt that traveling was her passion. And that's what she really loved to do. So it was more around how you, you know, how you turn your passion into your business. Yes, actually, you share quite a quite a few stories. Yeah, in many your class. stories I share. Because I do remember there's a, a cake one, but doesn't matter. Okay, so except the book, there is another workshop of yours coming. Yes. So there's another workshop called Inspire to Greatness. Yes, yeah, so Inspire to Greatness is going to be held on October 21 and 22nd. It's uh, going to be held in central Hong Kong. Uh, it's a collaboration between uh, a Vitality Center, it's also a holistic center, and another one called Soul Holistic. Together they are kind of promoting this event. Uh, those who are interested in, you know, in, in, in changing your life, whether it's your career, your business, your relationships, or just getting more free time in the world, uh, you know, I would encourage you to join that. That would be attractive, be having more free time in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be quite good. I'm really look looking forward to that. Okay, so we have come to the end of our interview. So thank you so much, Danny, for coming to our show and then share so many precious tips with our audience. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay, so I expect you to come back again and again and again. Sure. And then to share your new book and then your other new adventures. Thank you. I will okay. Do that. Thank you very so, much. Bye.